Hello and welcome to the first pilot edition of Phoenix TV's ET Cast. If you didn't read already, this will be the first of three episodes of the show, with the others coming in November and December. After the three pilot episodes have come out, we'll see the interest that was taken in it and if we will continue to the new year. The main idea of ET Cast is to have a roundup of the scene for the last month, giving you roundups of the top news, progression of Euro Cup, EMS, and any land events that have taken place this month. There will also be some extras with the pilot episodes. We will rely heavily on your feedback if these features were to continue. When the season ends, we will also be listing the winners of the lower divisions within Clanbase and ESL, but we will not currently be following the progress of these competitions. So this is pilot episode 1. This month we will be updating on the progress of Clanbase's EC competition. With all group games being played, the final 8 teams are known for the playoffs. We will also be bringing updates on EMS, as well as Dignitas and Speedlink's recent successful one-day cuts with games, tables and brackets. Later in the show, we have an exclusive Ventrilo interview with Shoutcast sensation Ozo, and we'll also be bringing you a heads up on any of the top frag movies this month, along with ET Cast Top 10 Teams of the Month. But first up, we have October Top News. Way back at the beginning of the month, we had the nice news of former Team Impact joining Epsilon. It is great to see Epsilon dive right back into enemy territory after what some may call a bad experience. But with a lineup of land of veterans, I doubt there will be any problems this time around. As you can see, the lineup it literally speaks for itself. Everyone knows these players, and right now they're on top of their game. We also have some other team news, with former team I Don't Know becoming Giants after joining Spanish team Giants Gaming. This is again good news for ET, and with this lineup led by Clown, anything is possible, as they boast a mix of ambition and experience, which has started to work in the competitions they are competing in. There is an article on Intel's Game On site from Dignitas player Anderson going over things some of the developers seem to miss the point on and highlighting the lack of competitive scene relations on care for online players. Although the article seems to use a healthy amount of thesaurus.com, I would recommend having a peek. Epsilon's new player Ross has released another ET Top 10 ranking for the period July to October. Based on opinions of players from multiple teams, it's a nice long read and it gives you an idea of what teams think of each other. Each panelist top 10 is given a score and then added up for an overall top 10 panelist rank for teams of this, for this period. Team Dignitas had some big changes this month. They welcomed Olber into the team as well as welcoming back former player Squall. The team now boasts three Finnish players with Matthias completing the trio and with Anderson and Drago finishing the lineup, the team, as always, will be there or thereabouts come the end of any competition. With star player Knight currently away on national service, it is believed the three Finns are battling it out for long-term positions within the team, as when Knight returns, he will surely walk straight into the squad. With new players coming into a team, someone always has to leave. After French player Carnage was removed from the lineup a month ago, Slovenian Jackax has decided now is a good time to, perhaps temporarily, hang up his rifle grenades and stop playing ET. Tech 9 Sapphire Movie Contest winners, along with the top 20 movie entries, were announced this month with over 100 movies being entered into the competition, including four enemy territory entries. E.T. was not amazingly represented, mainly due to the conspiracy theories about voting and that only Call of Duty movies would be considered for the top prize positions. This couldn't be more wrong, though, with three of the top five places going to movies from Warsaw, Counter-Strike 1.6 and Team Fortress 2. Maybe in the future, more E.T. movie makers will put their skills to the test. Congratulations, though, to Requiem, who managed to come joint 12th with his ET entry, Woody and Nothing More. Also some great news as well with DDoS protection. If you want to better protect your server from DDoS attacks, it's a good idea to take a look at the link in the sidebar. After a laughable forum thread at Splatterladder website, community members had to take things into their own hands as the Splatterladder admins were not willing to help the comp out the competitive scene. They, they, if anything, are partly to blame for a lot of the DDoS attacks that have been happening over the last few weeks, as they listed private server IPs publicly for no reason except ignorance or stupidity. A link to that laughable thread is in the sidebar as well. All news items that I've been discussing are all linked in the sidebar, so if you want to read more, just click them down there. Now on to competition progress. Dignitas Cup took place at the start of October, and there were some upsets. None more so than Giants Gaming taking down Dignitas in a 4-2 semi-final win. Epsilon were in full gear though, and took down the Giants in the final to take home victory. Sadly, Dignitas decided not to play a third place game, and team winners took home third. Glambase Eurocup hit the playoff stage this month with all group games being played. Group A finished as most would expect, with Epsilon and Giants Gaming going through in first and second. But Group B had what some would call a surprise victory in Energy Wave. After they beat 
Rage Gaming into top spot, which knocked out Team Speedlink in the process. Group C came out the tightest group of all. Team winners are the victims of the worst rounds 1 to loss ratio, with Stronger Than Hate and Aero Gaming going in first and second respectively. Group D winners Dignitas lived up to expectations, and a battle for second place between last year's High Flyers squad and the new team in Most Valuable Players. MVP took control though, and secured a playoff position. And this is how the playoffs look. Many would say it's easy to guess who would come out in the next stage, but it's the playoffs and there's no very easy games. I expect at least one upset in this stage. ESL Moss Series competition qualifiers ended this month and the groups were drawn. All group games finish early in November, so we'll give you a more extensive roundup of the competition next month, including brackets of the playoffs as they are drawn. Speedlink's Halloween Cup took place at the end of the month, which saw Team Dignitas take home gold, with a Stronger Than Hate lineup taking home silver and Speedlink grabbing bronze. The cup format was a bit strange in the early stages, where only one map needed to be played, but it was all back to the normal two maps for the semi finals and onwards. Now, on to our interviews for October. We hope to bring you one written interview per month, as well as one recorded interview. You will find on crossfire.nu in the next couple of days an interview of Raz by Artstar, but this month's recorded interview is of Welsh player and shoutcaster Ozo, whose fairly recent rise to fame due to his seemingly natural ability to shoutcast has given him a great opportunity in the gaming world after joining Quad V. He is now surrounded by some of the legends of the shoutcasting business, in Tosspot and Red Eye, and other top casters including Deman and Acepec and he has only just turned 19. The link to the interview is in the sidebar. We have decided to keep the interview separate from the main show. This is so that if you want to just only listen to an interview, you can do that easily. Now on to Frag Movies. A few Frag Movies have been released this month, with the long-awaited This Is E.T. release from CAMS. This movie stars a lot of well-known names and has been well-received by the community. Although most people feel that the movie didn't f fully live up to its name, and perhaps could have more accurately been called This Was E.T., with the number of the Stoyan players not currently playing competitive enemy territory, and a high number of the frags being in the old 6-on-6 six -six format. This being said, it is well worth a watch, and comes in as our movie of the month for October. Hopefully more to come from CAMS in the future. Some other worthy releases this month include Fuzz, Fuzz Frags 2B, another look at the world of Fuzz plus E.T., some entertaining moments in there. Also, Slightly releases the title, as he says, The Last of the Fratster Pieces, whether this means it is the last Frats movie, or he might actually stop putting in some effort in this movie, is anyone's guess. Nonix releases a frame movie as well, going by the name of Sick, and this had the makings of a great movie, but if you watch it, I think it's obvious what the problem was. It's weed. Yep. <laughs> we also have a look at the smooth movie in No Team Play by Replicator, which was a nice watch. And Scarsley releases his They Call Me Viral, which features some of the nice actions from the UK player. All links in the sidebar. Take a look. So this is the end of the pilot episode of ETCast. We had mentioned at the beginning of the show the ETCast Top 10 Teams of the Month. We, we are still currently working on this, and we hope to bring you this in the next week. Constructive criticism is welcome on the show. Do realise that this is a pilot episode and minimal effort has been made in the presentation for the YouTube video. This is just to see how well received it is as a show. We will make it look prettier in the future if, if everyone thinks it's a good idea to continue. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you check out all the links on the sidebar, including Ozo's interview and his top moment of the month. I'm Merlinator and I hope you uh, tune in next month.